My name is Bill Johnson. I'm an Extension Weed Scientist at Purdue University. And I'm Kirsten Wise. I'm the Extension Specialist for Field Crop Diseases at Purdue University. And we're here today in an Indiana soybean field to talk about soybean seedlings that are showing injury symptoms. Farmers that were lucky enough to plant at the end of April may be experiencing some symptoms of injury on their soybeans. One of the things that we know causes injury is a phytotoxic effect that occurs from the new fungicide fluopyram. This fungicide is marketed as a levo by Bayer Crop Science and it's promoted to reduce the symptoms of sudden death syndrome or SDS. Now Purdue research and research across the Midwest has shown that this fungicide can be effective in reducing the symptoms later on in the season. However, growers may be concerned about some of the injury symptoms they're seeing right now. Just as a demonstration, some of the symptoms that you'll see with the halo effect are going to be a browning or a discoloration on the cotyledon. You'll see kind of a maybe in the cool wet conditions, maybe it will even be almost a blackish color, usually along the outer edges of the cotyledon. Now, although we see this effect, you know, it can be more severe under these cool wet conditions. So areas of the field that may have experienced poor drainage, compaction, ponding, all of those symptoms will be more pronounced in those areas. Another thing that we're seeing is that fields that would have an application of a pre-emergence herbicide and were planted with seed that were treated with Olivo may experience more severe symptoms. In 2014, a vast majority of the beans in western Indiana were planted over about a three or four day period. Seven to ten days after that, we had wet conditions followed by a couple nights of frost. As a result, I got more phone calls on herbicide injury in a one week period of time in early June than I had received over the past 10 years combined. This year, we're starting to get a few reports of soybean herbicide injury coming into our offices. Now, many soybean varieties are tolerant to the herbicide sulfentrazone. Um, however, not all seed companies make this information available to farmers. Sulfentrazone, or the authority containing herbicides, are very valuable herbicides for control of small seeded broadleaf weeds, and so they're very popular for Midwest soybean production. However, they do have injury potential. Typically, when we see injury from sulfentrazone, we have a soybean variety that's sensitive to it, or we have a situation where the beans are in the crook stage and a splashing rain is received and sulfentrazone is washed up on the foliage of the plant. Now, what I want to show you here is a situation where we had beans planted about three weeks ago. Uh, the beans did not emerge for about 10 days due to cool conditions. However, we did not have a splashing rainfall event, nor do we have a soybean variety that's sensitive to sulfentrazone. And so if you take a look at the two rows on either side of me, you'll notice these rows don't show injury symptoms. Um, biomass wise, they appear to be bigger than the rows adjacent to these rows. So even though we had a, a herbicide with some injury potential sprayed under conditions in which we had cool, wet soil conditions, we didn't have the perfect storm of a sensitive variety and a hard splashing rain occurring with this as well. Although we do see more injury in the, the rows that were treated with the Olivo seed treatment and received a pre-emergent herbicide application, we do know from our past research in 2014 that we won't see any long-term yield impact from um, these results. After a number of years of doing this type of research, what we find is if, as long as our stand counts are in the desired range, and usually that's 90,000 or more plants per acre, it doesn't hurt soybeans to have a little bit of necrotic tissue on the unifoliates or trifoliates or to be gnarled up a little bit if they resume natural normal growth within about 10 days or so. So I think it's, it's very crucial to assess your stand when assessing herbicide damage and based on what Kirsten said earlier, uh, it appears like the same situation is, is true for the Olivo treated plots in that as long as your stand is okay, um, soybean yield should not be impacted. 